In this video, we're going to talk about what a histogram is and why histograms are useful, and then we'll show how we can create a histogram with Excel. To begin, a histogram visually represents the distribution of a continuous variable. For example, if we're interested in how much money people spend when they come into our store, we could create a histogram that would show how many people spend between zero and five dollars, five and twenty dollars, twenty and fifty dollars, fifty and a hundred dollars, or more than a hundred dollars. It would essentially be a sort of a bar chart type of look to that. Uh, so why would we want a histogram? Well, if we're trying to figure out why certain people spend more than others, it might be tempting to first look at different characteristics of the people and then correlate those with the spend. But it's always a good first step to look at individual variables and see their distribution. When we do that, we might pick up on some extreme values. Maybe Donald Trump came into our store and spent a million dollars. So we might want to take him out of the data set since he's an exceptional case. Maybe someone miscoded the, the value into our database and actually people spent a different amount than was in there. So we could maybe pick up some of those uh, issues when we create a histogram. Lastly, there are many statistical tests that actually expect that our data is in a bell curve. It's normally distributed. And so if it's not, we need to either transform our data or use a statistical technique that doesn't require normal data before we can continue. So, so that's, that's another concern. So moving on, let's see how we can actually create a histogram using Excel. Here I have some test score data. And I also need to create what I call bins, which are the ranges that we're interested in looking at these test scores. So I'm going to do below 60, 60, above 60, but less than 65. And I'm going to just kind of create these up through 100. And these are my bins. Now I'm going to switch to data. And there's the data analysis tool pack. If you don't have this tool pack, you can get it by clicking options, add-ins go and then select here click OK so I click data analysis histogram and then I select my input range here and then my bin range here I include the labels because I'm using this cell and this cell which are both just labels a1 and c1 and I click chart output and I'll put the output range right over here and now I click OK and I get a histogram unfortunately this is a misleading and ugly histogram so that's too bad but we can fix it to begin I'm gonna delete this frequency it doesn't really help it's just making the bars smaller and now the, the bins are misleading because this looks like there's only values of 60, 65, 70, 75, but there are actually values between those. So we need to change this to be a range. So let's change this to be 0 to 60, and then 60.01 to 65, 65.01 to 70, 70.01 to 75, 75.01 to 80, and you get the idea. 80.01 to 85, 85.01 to 90, 90.01 to 95, and then 95.01 to 100. And really, this isn't 60.01. It's just saying anything greater than 60 and up to 65, inclusive of 65. So now we have a histogram that's much clearer. We can tell what we're actually showing here. So this shows the frequency, the number of students or number of tests. And I'll change this to say number of tests. And I'll relabel this. 
And I'll call this so for example we have something like 45 students who scored above 95 and up to 100 <clears throat> that's what this histogram is showing us now one other problem is normally histograms have the bars right next to each other instead of with this gap so I'm gonna do that I will get rid of the gap here and also I can I think it looks a little bit better if we change it to be transparent that doesn't really matter but uh, now we have a nice looking histogram that shows us how our test scores are distributed so that's a good first step when you're working with continuous variables to look at their distribution if you're interested in how can we improve test scores the first thing we might look at is well are there certain uh, groups of test scores that are more prevalent maybe part of the class is very advanced and part of the class is very slow or maybe the whole class is kind of right in the middle so we might take different approaches in those two scenarios so looking at a histogram is a good first step in any data analysis for continuous variables so with that we conclude thank you